Welcome to the MSJC Internet Authoring Videocast. Though many people think of the Internet and the World Wide Web as one and the same, this is not the case. The Internet is simply the network that is used to carry the messages between a client and a server. What makes the World Wide Web work is a network protocol, or set of rules for data communication, called the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP for short. To retrieve a web page from the Internet, you will most likely type a web address into your web browser or click on a hypertext link. In both cases, the resource being retrieved is identified by a Uniform Resource Locator, or URL. A URL consists of the HTTP protocol being used to communicate with the web server by identifying either the server's fully qualified domain name or IP address, followed by the location on the server where the specific resource can be found. The process of submitting your URL to the web server is called an HTTP request. The web server interprets the URL in the request locates the corresponding resource and sends it back to the requesting device. The response message is appropriately called an HTTP response. If it is a web page that's being requested, the web browser then takes the code it has received from the web server and compiles a viewable page from it. The web browser is referred to as the client or user agent in this interaction, and the whole interaction is a client-server relationship. The message that is sent from the web browser to the web server is formatted using communication standards set forth by the Hypertext Transfer Protocol as defined in RFC 2616. A protocol is nothing more than a set of rules that are used to exchange information between two devices. HTTP is the protocol used by web servers to receive and respond to web browsers' requests for data. When you click on a hypertext link or type in the URL of a web page, the URL will begin with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, indicating that the web browser will be using the hypertext transfer protocol to communicate with the web server. If the web server cannot find the requested page, it issues a response that contains an HTML page with an appropriate error message, for example, an HTTP 404 file not found message. HTTP is said to be a stateless protocol. What this means basically is that once the request has been sent back to the web browser, the connection between the web server and the web browser is terminated. Because of this, HTTP doesn't know if future request response interactions are an ongoing conversation with a previous client or a request from a new one. The reason that HTTP is stateless is because it was originally intended to retrieve a single page for display. With all of the traffic on the Internet, imagine the problems that it would incur if each client had a constant connection to the server. At the very least, the Internet would slow to a crawl, if not collapse altogether. It's important to remember what was just stated in the last two paragraphs. To reiterate, HTTP makes the connection, delivers the request, returns the response, and then disconnects. You may not think that this is such a big deal right now, but when you're a web developer troubleshooting web applications, you'll soon learn how important this concept is to understand and remember. So write it down somewhere so you won't forget it. When a request is sent to the web server, it carries more than just the desired URL. There is actually a lot of extra information that is sent as part of the request, and this is also true for the response. Most of this extra information is generated automatically, so you don't have to deal with it programmatically. Although you don't typically have to fool with this information, you should know that it's there because web server extensions like ASP.NET or PHP can use the information provided by HTTP to have a direct effect on the content of the information sent back to the web client. Every HTTP message has the same format, whether it's a client request or a server response. You should think of all the information associated with the client request or server response as a packet. This packet can be broken down into three sections. The request response line, the HTTP header, and the HTTP body. 
As you can see, the packet for an HTTP request and an HTTP response are very similar and their information is common to both. The pieces of information such as the server name, the date, and the acceptance code are all called environment or server variables that can be used by web server extensions like ASP.NET or PHP to customize pages. An HTTP response is sent by the web server back to the client and consists of three pieces of information. One, the response line, two, the HTTP header, and three, the HTTP body. The response line contains two pieces of information. The HTTP version number, currently 1.0 or 1.1, 2.0 is in the works, and two, an HTTP status code that reports the success or failure of the request. This table shows you that these status codes are organized into numeric ranges, and each numeric range has a specific category of identification. Generally speaking, 200 codes are going to be success codes, 400 codes are going to be client error codes, and 500 codes are usually server errors. The response header is similar to the request header. The header information falls into three types. General, which contains information about either the client or the server but is not specific to one or the other. Entity, which contains information about the data being sent between the client and the server. And three, the response, which is information about the server sending the response and how it can deal with the response. The third line of the server's response header indicates the type of software the web server is running. The rest of the header is pretty much self-explanatory. If the response is successful, then the HTTP response body contains HTML code, which may contain links or embedded scripts that need to be executed by the browser. In addition, HTTP requests are used to retrieve any other resources such as image files as dictated by the HTML code. For instance, once the web browser processes the HTML code it received in the response from the web server, if it encounters an image tag, the web browser will use the value of the tag's source attribute to submit another request to the web server to retrieve the image file that was indicated by the image tag. If you like this video, please click the like button and leave us a comment down below. I also would appreciate it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos are posted.